Welcome to Train Signal. You are watching Lab Setup and Recommendations. So this is going to be another real short lesson before we dive into the meat of the course, but I think it's an important one. We're going to first give an overview of the lab that I'm using for the course, and I use my lab here at home. I'll give you some information on it and show you around, but it's something you're going to be seeing a lot of as we go through and demonstrate a lot of the features and functionality throughout the rest of the course. Then I'm going to try to convince you to build a lab. And I think it's a great idea to do that and it's something that I push for because it's a good way to learn, a good way to try these things out. And finally, I'll give you some recommendations as you build your lab. So with that, again, it's going to be quick. Let's go ahead and get started. So let me give you an overview of my lab. And the picture on the right technically isn't the one I'm going to be using for this course. It's actually my Charlotte lab for Vero with UCS. That's when I was putting in a new VNX 5300 EMC array the other day. But I don't have a great picture of my lab just because it sits in my office and it's pretty boring but it's a very powerful lab that is very quiet very power efficient and doesn't make any noise it's a three host vSphere 5 cluster each host has a quad core Intel CPU at least 16 gigs of RAM four NICs I have two on board in each host and two on an uh, additional card two of them have 64 gig internal SSDs and they all boot from USB thumb drives Two of the servers also now have 10 gig adapters in it for some testing that I'm doing with that. You know, not something I need for my home lab, but very handy to play around with. Storage is a Synology DS1511 with five Western Digital Black drives. I'm a big fan of the Synology uh, hardware, and uh, it's just, you know, works really well for my vSphere lab. Very powerful. It's a workhorse. I never touch that thing. It just runs. And really, I'm a, also a big proponent of having external storage in my lab. I know a lot of people run, say, a uh, you know, virtual storage appliance, a VSA, within their lab on top of a vSphere host, but I like to simulate a production environment as best I can. Networking as a combination depends on what I need to show you. So right now, the majority of the time, I use a Cisco 300G-28. This is Cisco's kind of their small office switch. It's a 28-port, uh, layer 3 capable, you know, it's very basic layer 3 routing functionality, but it is layer 3 capable. It has a good interface. It's a fast switch. It's all 28 port 1 gig. I have an HP 1810G, which is what I used to use before I needed layer 3 support, and I'll use that to show you a few things. It's also a great switch for a home lab. Uh, both the 1810 and the 300G are fanless. They are completely silent, and they're low power. Then, if I want to do any more, you know, more robust testing, I have uh, two Cisco 2960S switches with the 10 gig modules in those. That's what I'm using with the 10 gig adapters. But for some things, Cisco iOS, I'll use those. When I show you some Nexus OS configuration, I'll actually be using the lab that's over there on the right. So I have some Nexus 5010s and some Nexus 5500s in my lab, so I can show you Nexus configuration. Real quick, let's jump over to vCenter and I'll give you a tour of the lab. So here we are. I have three hosts, and if you notice the name, I am a Transformers fan. I will not lie about that. So my hosts are Bumblebee, Megatron, and Optimus. Uh, they are in the cluster called Cybertron in a data center called Galaxy. I've got a myriad of different VMs running here. This will change as we go throughout the course, but I've got VMs from all sorts of things, from you know, vCenter operations to some media servers that I run for my house to Untangle, which is my firewall, to Netformix that I use for work, to all sorts of things, plus some XP machines I've built here specifically for the course. But each one, say Bumblebee, let's take a look at you, quad core, uh, 2.4 gigahertz with a total of 16 gig of RAM. So I believe all these guys are now 16 gig. That is correct. I need to order them, order more for one of these guys and take it to 32. But a lot of the time, my lab runs on two hosts. Uh, dynamic power management within vSphere will actually power one down. So I let it go ahead and do that, and it'll bring it up as needed. I spun up some machines tonight, so it brought on the third, uh, the third host online. But again, let's take a look at Optimus here. Configuration, network adapters, four different NICs, two on board, two on a card. Storage is very simple. Uh, this guy has an internal SSD, and I have two NFS data stores. I actually have three Synology NAS here. Uh, one of them, that 1511 I mentioned, is my primary data store, Data Store 01. I've got a DS1010 that I use for backups and media. 
uh, and also a data store O2. I just use that for lab work to play around with things. And then I've got a third one that, I, that I'm just goofing around with. But all in all, the lab is pretty simple. The SG300 and the HPs are online now. I bring the 2960 in when I need it. So that's pretty much a tour and an overview of the lab. By the way, these are Enterprise Plus, so I have full features set in my lab. I can do about anything that I want to do here. So we'll be using all the full features of the distributed switch and all that. So let's jump back over to the slide deck. So why should you build a lab? And again, I, I'm a big fan of labs. If you go look on my blog, which is jasonnash.com, I documented the build of my lab from what I, you know, when I was trying to choose a storage device to trying to use choose a networking device to when I built my, my host and what I kind of used to build those and why. You'll see my thought process. And there's a lot of information out there on building a home lab for yourself. And the, you know, the money you have to invest varies greatly. You can build a large desktop, run VMware Workstation or VMware Fusion if you're a Mac user like I am, and run vSphere underneath that, it's what I call an inception lab. And you can run multiple vSphere hosts and VMs on those hosts, and you kind of get levels upon levels. It's a very inexpensive way to do this. I think it's a bit confusing, especially as you want to get more advanced with networking, which is why I don't do it. But it's absolutely a possibility. I know a lot of people that do that. I'm a fan of kind of replicating production, but my lab is one of the more, you know, costly labs than doing, say, an Inception lab. But there's ways to get into it. You can start with one host or two hosts. You can start with a two, you know, a two-bay external NAS or a virtual storage appliance. EMC has their uh, VSA based on the VNX that is freely available. Others do the same things. Left Hand has one. Others do as well. So there's options there, too. So you can really step into this. But why? Well, it, you know, there's a lot of good reasons. Break something that's not in production. I break things all the time in my lab, especially when I'm playing with new features or upgrades or a new process, and I can do it. And I've got two labs with my company at Vero, but we use those for demo and engineering build labs, so I don't really want to break those too often, you know, only if they, I need to do something that I can't do here. You know, maybe I need access to an EMC array. I'll do it there instead of here. Be able to test different configurations. I can do all sorts of things with my lab, you know, and see what happens. That's much harder to do in a production environment. I try out new products all the time. I download evaluations, throw it in the lab, see what I think, rip it back out. And it's just a great way to study. If you're studying for a VCP or a VCAP or your VCDX, you know, I think it's a requirement to have a lab to move up to these higher, you know, certifications. Two common ways to build a lab. I just kind of went over those. One is a physical like I have. The other one is a virtual or your inception lab. And for this course, a good network switch is highly recommended. And unfortunately, that's one of those areas of high cost. You know, my SG300, I think, is about $500 when you go buy one of those. I needed a 28 port because I have four NICs in each host. My two large NAS boxes each have two NICs. I've got other stuff that plugs into it. So all of a sudden, I run out of ports. You can go cheaper. The uh, HP1810 is a 24 port that I have. And I think they run about $300, something like that. They just don't do layer three, which in most labs is not a requirement. So look around and see. If you're less worried about, you know, noise or things like that, you can get deals on used switches. But my lab is sitting about eight feet away from me right now. And I want it to be completely silent and low power, which kind of dictates, you know, some of the things that I buy. As I mentioned, I recommend to have a shared storage array. But you can do a virtual storage appliance. You just kind of get into a bit of a dependency situation because you need to bring the host up. You need to start the VSA, and then you can start bringing up your VMs, whereas mine, again, is more like a production environment. But as I keep saying, you can kind of step into these things gradually. You don't have to go buy everything up front. Some recommendations. You don't need a lot of hosts. Two is plenty. I have three just because there are some times I want to have three different hosts for various reasons. And really, when I was building out my host, memory for the, these boards my systems use ECC RAM was very expensive. So the only way I could go up in memory was to really add a third host, and that kind of drove me to do that. But my suggestion is two is fine, and that way you can take advantage of clustering features within VMware. I suggest at least four NICs in each lab host, again, as a lab recommendation. I'm rarely pushing 400 gigabit to anything in my lab. But I can do things like play around with subdividing or segmenting traffic 
and I'm not stuck just having two NICs to do that. vSphere Enterprise Plus licensing is great to take advantage of the advanced features. You can use eval licensing for testing. There's a lot of word going around, and by the time this course comes out, it may have happened, of VMware starting back their VMTN program, which is kind of like TechNet from Microsoft for study. So you can get, you know, Enterprise Plus licensing for study usage, things like that. Uh, right now, you can deploy eval licensing and reapply for eval and reinstall some things every 60 days. It's not the best option, but it'll get you by. Highly recommended again to have a managed switch capable of VLANs. So any good managed switch will do that. Layer 3 capability is, is you know, optional. It may be beneficial to you. Most of the time it's not. I rarely do something with Layer 3, but it's nice to have when I need it. But don't let it kind of price you out. You can always do just a good managed Layer 2 switch. So that's kind of the overview of my lab and a little bit of recommendations for building your own lab. And again, I've got this documented on my blog, jasonnash.com. If you hit up Google, there's a lot of other guys that I know that have done the same thing. They'll give you their build lists, what it costs to build. And as things go, you know, my lab, my lab hosts are about a generation old. So the CPUs you buy today are going to be better than what I have. So it's good to go out and look around, see what your options are, and see what the pricing is. But with that, we're done with this one. We're about to get started really getting to the meat of the course. So I look forward to seeing you on the next lesson.